Allison. So uh, microcirculation is really the only way we're feeding that, that our cells are fed and nourished and waste removed. Correct. Correct? Wow. Yeah, it's got to get into the the uh, capillary before it gets delivered to a cell. The, the veins and arteries deliver it to the capillary bed, but it's the capillary bed that, bed that diffuses it into the, the cells themselves, into the tissue. Mm. Amazing. Now, I remember somewhere, I, I think it was in one of your videos, did you mention about the energy being changed in the cell as it is being fed and nourished and waste removed? Is that a... Well, of course, the whole cell is going to be transformed in its function. You know, if it's mm -hmm. deprived of what it needs, whether it's, you know, perhaps one molecule like boron, then it's not going to function fully. And when you can restore what's missing, then the cell knows how to heal itself. There's no person, there's no machine that can heal anybody. We can certainly do things to augment and support someone's healing, but it's the body that ultimately is going to do it. You know, I, I like to default back to that story of the, the woman with a 12-year issue of blood. She can't get through this issue. She's willing, she wants to, but she can't get through it. She needs a little support, and, you know, they speak of support, and I would... I would take it as the input of the active presence of love as touching the hem of Yeshua's garment. Nothing to do with a piece of cloth, but touching into his energy to vitalize herself on another level. And the willingness she has to heal is what he you know, tells her is what carried her through her healing process. And so it's always the structure that's going to heal. It's that structure that's going to do the healing. It's nothing outside. There are supports, there are ways to augment it if it's the structure's not mm -hmm. getting what it needs. And you give it what it needs, it's going to do what it's designed to do. And if it's being deprived, whether it's externally, as in, you know, there's boron poor soils and you need a, to supplement it, or whether it's blocked and just not getting to the cell because of internal conditions. And, of course, the, the major internal condition is chronic um, sympathetic dominance where that fear flight fright freeze or fawning mechanism falls into place and uh, and cellular blood flow is shunted away from the higher functions of the brain shunted away from the rest digest regenerate healing functions of the body to survival and so getting that switched back, which is one of the first things that the Avacyn does, is it activates that sympathetic dominance. And, you know, there are many programs out there for activating sympathetic dominance, but if the primary, what should I say, the, the primary impetus for being in sympathetic dominance in the first place is fear that constricts blood flow and redirects it, if that becomes chronic and if those structures become congested because of the chronic wastes that are there, then until that's addressed, it's not going to get to the cell no matter how much of it you put in your body. I know the, the gentleman who introduced me to the Avacyn originally, Patrick McGann, you've probably heard him on the show. He's a naturopath. We yes. hang out with each other for better than a half a century now. And one of the things that he noticed he does a lot of supplementation. But when he started using the Avacyn, he was able to cut back his supplementation by $85 a month that he felt he didn't need now that his body it was being distributed in his body that he didn't need all that supplementation to try and get enough into the cell to make it work that the Avacyn was taking it in at that much deeper level that he didn't need, you know, he didn't have to waste you know, a lot of a lot of times, if, if supplements aren't being metabolized, they just get peed out. They're gone. So it's the, the key is not just getting them into the body, but it's getting them into the cell. And if the, mm -hmm. if there's chronic uh, sympathetic dominance, it's just not going to the cell. I have actually heard several practitioners over the past several years speak about just because something is in our 
blood, you know, a, a good level of a mineral or, or whatever the case may be does not mean it's getting into the cell. And That's the whole point. You are the, yes, yes, you, this is the first time. You're the first one who has explained, at least in my understanding, of how we feed the cell. So that takes us from the level of what's in the blood into the cell through, the, through proper... It's got to get into the capillary. Yeah, it's got to get into the capillary to get into the cell. And if those capillary orifices are closed, chronic sympathetic dominance and congested because of going on for so long until something gets in there and cleans it out, then there's trouble in paradise. That is such a, such a beautiful, beautiful scenario. Wow. And, and if, if we're feeding the cell the way the cell needs and, and, and desires, the energy is going to be proper in that cell. And, that's and then if you have the mind energy, overall. that's going to improve our overall physiological expression. And then you start to bring in the flip side of what we call the body, and that is the mind. There's no separation between the two. And the correction of what we're doing, you know, the, why is the sympathetic dominance there in the first place? Because there's fear. Because the mind energy of fear has entered the scene. So then the process of forgiveness of fear, you know, you back to Yeshua, and contrary to what many in churchianity will tell you about how great fear is, at least 15 different times Yeshua says, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. It's like, and, and then refers to fear, you know, almost like a demon to be cast out. Perfect love casts out fear. If love is fully present, frontal lobes of the brain, back of the brain, then the, the mind cannot generate a fear-based reality, and the cell doesn't have to tolerate it. And there's where the forgiveness process comes in. And you know, we can congest the function of a cell just by thinking about something fearful. You know, um, you know, think about yourself in a nice, quiet. You're in a beautiful spa in meditation, and you know, you're just laid back and relaxing and breathing, and things are just awesome. And all of a sudden, you hear in your ear what sounds like a gunshot. What happens to your physiology? It changes totally and completely because of a thought. And so the forgiveness process becomes the, I think, the major key. I think without any, you know, physiological support, if we could get our mind energy and our relationship with ourselves as love right, everything else would unfold of its own accord. Healing would occur naturally. Mm -hmm. And depending how chronic the condition is, how long it's been going on, and how, how stuck we are in the perceptual modes based in fear, then physiological support, nutritional support, you know, if, if only 10% of what you eat is getting into the cell and the cell needs 50%, well, gee, if you supplement 50%, the cell's going to start to get what it needs but then you're throwing half of it away. So there's where the microcirculation comes in to literally deliver the, number one, just the fluids, just, just the fact of a, a cleansing fluid coming through the cell where it's been deprived is major. It's going to make a major difference in the function of the cell. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, the cleansing thought is going to do the same for it on the level where the cell is control mechanisms of the mind. You know, if we look at Bruce Lipton's work, he tells us that you think a thought produces a literal molecule. The molecule lands on a cell, inserts itself in the cell, and if one is looking within that cell, we would say as that molecule, that neuropeptide inserts itself, that's literally that thought, we would call what comes into the cell chemistry. And, of course, the chemistry of fear is a powerful force. Mm -hmm. Notice how Job came to a conclusion after all that he went through. His, I mean, his whole story of a healing crisis, he comes to the conclusion, Oh, I got it. That which I feared most, that which I lent my creative energy to, has come upon me. I just set it up. Exactly. 
Forgiveness withdraws the energy from those habitual patterns that, you know, are sometimes ingrained so deeply, you know, you recognize it coming from a thousand generations. So it takes some significant work, you know. They said, Yeshua, how many of these darn worksheets do we have to do? How many times do I need to forgive us to my brother? Is yeah. seven enough? <laughs> Definitely not. It's going to be, you know, because these are, you know, look to the lives of the fathers for ours are but a shadow of theirs. We tend to have our patterns established, much as we hate to admit it, by our power person. And until we can undo, until we can literally confront those things, then the mind will find all kinds of reasons to be pissy and moany and angry and condemning and judging and you know, do all kinds of things. But when you recognize you're doing that to your own cellular structure first, that you get the original and they're just getting a carbon copy, you start to think twice about what you do with your mind. Mm-hmm. This has been a wonderful aha moment putting this together these last few days about the microcirculation and the energy. And I'm, I don't believe I ever mentioned it before, but in this area where I live, I came to visit some friends several years ago and set up an appointment with a man uh, in 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 the Dallas area, and he Prime. is a, a large uh, testabetic uh, body, excuse me, for energy and energy systems. And right. mine mine uh, had several. I, I, I'm understanding that each muscle group is is basically a, a large uh, like battery through the must be individual cells. And yeah, the individual cell functions like a battery. Mm-hmm. No, the, the outside of the cell, the the interstitial fluid around the cell is designed to be of one charge, a negative charge or alkaline, and the core of the cell is acid. So that creates literally, you've got an alkaline battery that creates a flow which carries nutrients into the cell and such when the uh, excess of electrons in an alkaline fluid are drawn to the positive charge in the center of the cell. But if people are you know, in that congested place, you know, if they're the, the tree that's fallen on the river and it's all congested and their dietary regimen is one of avoidance because they don't want to feel and don't want to deal, then, then they'll turn all the fluids in their structure acidic and now you don't have that battery happening you've got to have a difference in the charge from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell to open the pathways for nutrition to even get into the cell and you know where they where oftentimes when when that system is off base there's pain and so what people want more than anything is relief from their pain Mm -hmm. but the truth is you really don't want relief from your pain if you, you know, there are many mechanisms the world has discovered that they can sell you in a bottle that will shut down your awareness of your pain, if you've got any. And that's what people tend to become addicted to. But yes. what that does is it shuts down pathways of feedback into the structure and into the brain. The difference with the Avacyn is the Avacyn is opening up pathways of vitalization into the cell and throughout the structure, as opposed to, oh, we're going to get rid of these symptoms. You know, it's the only medical treatment that I know of that I hear people regularly say, I love the side effects of my Avacyn medical treatment, <laughs> because it's just pure support in opening the pathways for the structure if it's got the resources to heal. If it's got the tools to process what's going to move, things are going to come up, things are going to move. And so, much like the hem of his garment, as it was spoken in that particular passage, it was the woman's willingness to heal and do her work that brought her healing. He's really clear on it. And all he was was support. Mm. And so, as opposed to restricting, which drugs do, and junk food and alcohol and all the stuff that's, you know, taken over our culture. Mm-hmm. 
it opens the pathways for support and the energy that's needed to get in where it's needed, where it's maybe been blocked for literally for generations. They call those inherited diseases. And so unblocking those things becomes a major piece of work. Had you ever heard this before? And it got me thinking about this whole path about energy. This this uh, man's office that I went and did the testing, which was reasonable, uh, priced, and found out that I had I I forget exactly the number, but there's a, there's several groups of these batteries in my body, if you will, that right. were that were low, they were not where they should have been. There's a way they measure this, and I forget the, the, mach- the machine that, that does it. But some right. were even reversed, reverse polarity. Had you ever heard of anything like that? I have, yes. It's just amazed me. Okay, so that amazed me. It kind of blew me away. Now, I was certainly wanting to to get that situation resolved, but his pricing was just astronomical to address that. So, of course, it's something I right. wasn't able to accomplish and still haven't. But it seems to me, from what I've heard about Avison, that it would do that, it would do that job. Because if we well, again, everything it's to the, the structure to the that's... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the structure that's going to do the healing, not the Avacyn. What the Avacyn is going to do is open up pathways for the delivery of what's there. And as I said with Patrick, you know, he he cut back his supplementation by $85. He literally paid for his Avacyn by the supplementation that he didn't need because it was getting yeah, delivered into yeah. his cell. Mm. Uh, so, I, so I put this all together these last few days in my mind and thought, this is... This is just amazing. Another wild big aha moments here, and and uh, I share something else with with you uh, about about me. As I had for as long as I can remember, since in probably early twenties. So it goes back a couple of years anyway, and right. <laughs> I've had this situation in my blood <clears throat> where. The MCV, which I understand is the mean cor- corpuscle v- volume, is that how it's pronounced? Mm-hmm. The size of the red blood cells, yep. size of the red blood Corpus, cells. Right. I run, I run high, or or many times, I, I mean r- very high, like right at the at the upper limit, or sometimes over the limit. And you know, I've seen that in in the red reports over the years, and folks say, well, that's that's no problem. You know, it's still still very close. Uh, well, I never could agree with that, but I haven't found anybody that could shed any light on it. If the size of the red, uh, red blood uh, cells are large in my body, that tells me that from what I understand from what understanding more about microcirculation now, that I'm having difficulty pushing those red blood cells through the capillaries. That would tend to be a challenge, yes. And one of the things that happens with the Avacyn is the it is a, blood is a, what's called a non-Newtonian liquid, uh, just like non-Newtonian you know, molasses. Non-Newtonian, which means that molasses is, is really slow in February. <laughs> it mm-hmm. thickens with temperature. It thins as the temperature goes up. So one of the things that happens, you know, the mechanism of action with the Avacyn is it's pouring heat into the bloodstream. Within 10 minutes of your hand being in the machine, all of the blood in your body, you're getting a whole body treatment. Every Everywhere the blood goes is being touched by that warmed blood. One of the things that it tends to do is to relax muscle fibers, and it's muscle fibers that close the capillary and restrict the blood flow through the capillary which restricts it getting to the cell. So that warm the blood over those capillaries softens them, opens them, and allows that circulation to enter where you know, sympathetic dominance shut those capillaries down. You know, it's kind of like the headwaters of the of blood flow to the cell. It shut those headwaters down you know, when sympathetic dominance started. 
And of course, if you shut something down where it's designed to be a flow, there's going to tend to be an accumulation of debris if that flow is slowed down. You know, one of the other, you know, if you talk to Magda, one of the things she noticed very early in using the Avacyn was that her gray roots were disappearing. Jeannie, when we met 20 years ago, was already coloring her hair every month or so to keep the gray roots covered. And when COVID struck, we stopped, you know, spending so much time outside, so she just let that go. And uh, and now, if you look at a picture of her, she has dark, dark roots. She doesn't have gray roots anymore. Wow. And the thesis being that, you know, the coloring of hair comes from the minerals in the hair. If there's a deficiency of minerals getting into the cell and getting the hair follicle, then the hair is going to lose its color. They say mm-hmm. that's a traditional part of aging, but actually it's a traditional part of restricted circulation that doesn't allow the delivery of the nutrient into the cell. Mm-hmm. And so Jeannie's roots are quite dark, and she certainly doesn't need to uh, to uh, dye them anymore. <laughs> and Magda had the same experience. She was actually the first one to notice that. Amazing. Amazing. And my, in my family, I'm... You had mentioned, I think, your family in the, on the video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The gray hair you're talking about? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, my brother was white you know, 25 years ago. He's my younger brother. And uh, I was gray, salt and pepper, but I'm getting more pepper and less salt <laughs> My gray hair that's changing in my my beard and my my hair. That's where I got to go. So it's, <laughs> it's deliver, it's, it, again, it's delivering. It's it's allowing the nutrition to go down deeper into the cell, it, deeper into the structure. Mm-hmm. So it's enhancing the delivery mechanism rather than. And there's where it comes in as non-invasive uh, natural pain treatment. One of the things that the device is approved for by the FDA is pain management. And so it's totally, you know, most pain management has to do with shutting down, inhibiting those pain signals from getting to awareness. That's what anesthetics do. That's what drugs do. Mm-hmm. Where this enhances the nutrient delivery into the cell so that the cell isn't screaming in pain. You know, 5% lack of oxygen in the cell, according to uh, uh, Dr. Sarno. John Sarno, a 5% lack of oxygen means that you've got a cell in excruciating pain. So you can anesthetize the cell, shut down pathways of communication, which just leads to further degeneration, or you can open the pathways of communication and you can deliver more oxygen to the cell and the cell goes, oh, I'm a happy camper now. I've got what I need. Yep. There was a huge aha for me when I heard that. Well, the thing that got my attention initially with the Avison was you know, my friend Patrick McGann. He was, mm-hmm. I think, 74 at the time he ran into the Avison. He had a Beamer, which he'd bought through us about two years earlier, and that really made a difference with his diabetic, and it just made a huge difference in the functioning of his body. But his feet were still in such excruciating pain daily after two hours' work that he just had to take the, his feet off the ground for the rest of the day. And within about five weeks, he had gone from two hours to five hours a day. He could be up and working. And and at at the five-hour point, this is where he kind of got my attention. At the five-hour point, he said, I wasn't having excruciating. I'd have aches and pains in my feet, but I wasn't in such excruciating pain. I had to put them up. That's what got my attention. That's when I bought an Avacyn. And that was one of the first things I noticed was a change in my feet. (laughs) Although, fortunately, I don't have any kind of diabetic problem there, but I had a genetic uh, inherited tendency toward foot problems. And I had a, um, a tingling and a numbness in all 10 of my toes, and I thought it was from that genetic anomaly and that it was just nerve damage, and that's the way it was going to be. The second time I put my hand in the Avacyn, 80% of that disappeared, and within three months it was totally, completely gone. 
That's amazing. So the difference between shutting off pain pathways, which means restricting, which is going to create more congestion, to opening nerve pathways and communication pathways, which means the cells and the self-regulating mechanisms in the cells, now that they've got communication back, they can talk to each other and go, hey, I need a little bit of this, I need a little bit of that. So where a cell might put out, when it gets a signal, it might put out a few micrograins of a particular chemical that another set of cells needs. If medicine determines that that chemical is lacking, you know, where it might be, you know, one one thousandth of a microgram that the cell needs, it gets blasted with a two, two milligram capsule and it doesn't just target as the body would the cell that's got the deficiency or the problem but once you pour that two milligrams in all of the receptor sites in the body for that particular um, energy pattern get locked up and there's where you get side effects because now where something was put in that's well we we identified that we need some of this in the heart great but guess what you didn't need it in the brain and you didn't need it in the gut <laughs> And you didn't need it in the spleen, but it goes there anyway because they're receptor sites. So now we have all kinds of havoc. That's why this, the, the spreadsheet on side effect, quote unquote, side effects, diseases caused is so long. Because it's not selective as the body would be selective when, when the set of cells said, I need something. And then if you put in those inhibitors, pain management, then that communication is further cut off and further frustrated by the fact that the system just got flooded with all this stuff that just confuses the whole communication system of the structure. Which, of course, then that creates a certain set of symptoms that, oh, have we got a pill for that? Let, let me get you one of those. And then those symptoms will all go away. And sure enough, they do. Then if you look on the package insert, oh, there's another set of symptoms to come, but we'll take care of that when it happens, and we've got a pill for that too. And by the time you get, you know, I remember in one particular intensive, we were talking about what people, pills people were on. There was a gentleman who was in the military, and he at that point got up from the classroom, went back to his room. We were in a, a facility that had bedrooms all around. He went back to his bedroom, brought out a Walmart-style plastic bag, and dumped a full bag out on the table of stuff he was taking every day. Wow. I've been there. Yeah. And not 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 pharmaceutical wise, but supplement wise. Right. Same same idea, same idea. But that's that's tough on yeah, the important. Yeah, and an important thing I think in the supplement world is as much as possible to get things that are based in food rather than in chemicals. Mm -hmm. Great, great. You know, point. if we've got it based in food, then all the coenzymes and the you know the nutrients that are designed to enhance the use of that particular chemical in the body are there to support it. Whereas if you just put the chemical in. You create a deficiency somewhere because the body's got to go, well, if I'm going to use that, I need some of this. Well, let me go get some of that from here. Let me get some of that from here. Let me get some of that from here. And now you've got four more sets of symptoms. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. So, Allison uh, absolutely helps restore parasympathetic uh, mode to the body. Balance. We can say that balance. Thank you. So we hear so much about vagal nerve tone today and how important that is for, you know, the yeah. gut and, and the heart and so forth. So my thought here would be that restoring parasympathetic, would that increase? I mean, it seemed to me that it's would increase, increase the vagal, vagal nerve tone. tone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. And Many many people will say, well, we need to stimulate this parasympathetic nervous system. That part of the autonomic nervous system needs to be stimulated. But, and I started to make this point earlier, I'm not sure I completed it, but if you stimulate it into activity, but the pathways that supply the activity, i.e. blood, is blocked, then 
just frustrated the game. You've got to open those pathways so that when they are, you know, when the body starts to move out of sympathetic dominance, fear, flight, fright, freeze, mm-hmm. fawning starts to move out of that, then the pathways are restored to the areas that were robbed of nutrition and support and oxygen in order to facilitate being ready to run or fight. And that flight or fight response can only carry on for so long. And then the structure goes into adaption fatigue. That's, Is that the same as the exhaustion phase? The, well, the exhaustion phase is uh, adaption fatigue comes first in Cellier's work and then breakdown. That's where the, the system just becomes exhausted. So the adaption fatigue is first and then ex- exhaustion phase is pretty much the yes. the final um, the follow up rough yep. situation. I see. Yep. Wow, that's a serious place. So if we're if one is nearing or in an exhaustion phase, that almost sounds to me like adrenal fatigue and things along that nature could be very well in the that same would be, period of time. Yes. And in our driven culture, got to go, 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 got to do it, do it, do it, got to fix it, fix it, got to produce, produce, produce. One of the last things people do is give themselves a space to rest and regenerate, recuperate. Once that uh, parasympathetic flow is opened, vagus nerve is now getting a blood supply, the whole structure is getting a blood supply there to rebuild, to redo what needs to be done. I mean, you just got to lay down and let it happen. You can't keep running and keeping all your energy going on the outside. You know, that's kind of a form of fawning. You know, oh, I have to make sure, but I have to do it. Mm-hmm. And that's part of what leads to that adaption fatigue and ultimately burnout. Well, thank you Exhaustion. again for explaining that. I had, <clears throat> I had that marked down. I didn't quite uh, grasp it, but uh, now I see it. Now I'm hearing it. Yeah. And and the, the beginning, so that's the end stage of it. The beginning of it is stress. And a, a conversation that people need to put an end to is, well, I was just in a stressful situation. There is no such thing as a stressful situation. Stress is never created from the outside. Stress comes from goal. You know, I've, I've sat in all kinds of stress management workshops and they can tell you, you know, you should breathe and you should relax and you should do this in order to deal with it. But I've never found anybody that could tell me what causes stress. So the person who's sitting, you know, the example we used earlier, the person who's sitting back in the spa, relaxed, and, you know, everything's wonderful. And they hear a sound of what appears to be a gunshot. And now everything goes on high alert. Why? Because I have a goal to survive. If I didn't have a goal to survive in that situation, I'd just lay back and go, eh. yeah. Kind of like the drug addict naturally does. Mm-hmm. So, wow. and, and this is the genius of Yeshua coming 2,000 years ago from the other end of this whole conversation and saying, if you've got a problem, you need to do some forgiveness. And the core of forgiveness is canceling goals. Huh? Cancel goal. You just alleviated a stress. You just opened a pathway for different information and energy to flow within the structure. And if at the root of that goal, if the other end of that goal was rage, fear, terror, trauma, by canceling that goal, the core of the forgiveness worksheet process, that perceptual construct that's based in threat and fear collapses in on itself and now you have direct access to the underlying energy distressing the cell and creating the fatigue and exhaustion so you know I mean 2,000 years ago this genius tells you sufficient for the day are the evils thereof and the word evil there in Aramaic isn't you know the classic Greek evil but another pro- a proper interpretation of that word in Aramaic is unripened or incomplete. So don't have any more goals for today 
than those that you can comfortably and reasonably complete in the next waking period. Sufficient for the day are the evils thereof. That's what he was saying. He was talking about stress management, and then he told them how to do it. Here's how you forgive. Shebag. Cancel. You look at the goal that's driving your structure into exhaustion phase stress, and you cancel that goal. When you cancel that goal in the presence of love, that goal collapses in on itself and gives you access to the underlying disintegrative energy that's impacting and destroying the cell. Now you bring that forward and that energy is transmuted in the presence of active love and the act of forgiveness has taken place. It's all about stress. He was teaching 2,000 years ago. Hans Selye did a bang-up job of showing us what it means today. And he so was no more. What was he? Forties, fifties? Selye? Oh yeah, yeah. He was back. Mm-hmm. I think it might have been sixties, late late fifties. Yeah. Okay. Canadian neuroscientist. Amazing. At least I consider him so, to be that. I, medicine might not, but he was, you know, just so on track with that stress stuff. Yeah. But even he didn't, I think, he knew to, you know, hold back the goals, but I don't think he had the comprehension of this is what creates stress and this is how you get rid of it. You cancel goal, you collapse the perception that's driving based in that energy that's doesn't belong in the cell and you process it out through having love present in you as you collapse that perceptual construct based in what was at the root of the sympathetic dominance in the first place. So we've got a whole feedback loop and everywhere that you can step into the loop, you're going to assist the body is going to be more capable of restructuring itself according to its original harmonious plan. What a much better place to live. Yeah. Well, we'll see people who, let's say, for instance, they're in that disease place and they find nutrition and they go off on carrying the banner. Nutrition is what heals disease. Nutrition doesn't heal disease. No, no, Michael, you don't understand. Poor nutrition causes, poor nutrition doesn't cause disease. Poor nutrition is a symptom of disease. When somebody doesn't want to deal with the disease energies they put in themselves, they run for a six pack of beer or a, you know a, a bag of Doritos or whatever, something with sugar, something with salt, something with rancid oils in it that suppresses the system. And now one doesn't have to feel how cool is that? But if you shut down the pathways to feed back what you're doing to yourself, then you're just on a self-destructive pathway. So each place that we can step into the cycle and improve it, poor nutrition doesn't cause disease, good nutrition doesn't cure disease. However, poor nutrition is a very big factor in virtually all diseases, and good nutrition is a very big factor in all healing, but it's a factor, it's not cause. And that's where the invitation was to be holy, not down on your knees with your hands folded, but whole, understanding on every level how this whole system interacts and functions. That's holy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, and, and I knew that something just wasn't adding up in my mind. I shared with you for years, I think I'm sure even, that uh, I would see all these different types of uh, practice of, of medicine, visit people, speak with them, even, you know, the work uh, that I had in, inside a health facility, a natural health healing facility for some years, I would see people doing all the right things, eating the most pristine diet, exercising, yep. and yet still pass off this plane. And it just didn't make sense to me until I came across this work, your work, and uh, things like the Amazon. It's just absolutely amazing. Well, I'll go back to the ancient scriptures, and they said, whatever you're looking for, whatever your stress is about, whatever the goal is, and you're trying to get it from out there, it's not going to come from out there. If you don't get it in here, you don't get it. So seek ye first your connection to 
the creative self, the being called love that you are, and then go out and set your goals in the world and have a blast. It's, that's what it's there for. But if you try to do it backwards, you try to get something from the world, whether the world is your body or your mind or your emotions or your finances, whatever, you try to get something from that that you don't have. You know, that, that passage says, to, to he that has it will be given. To he who has not, that which he has will be taken away. If you're not connected on the level of creatorship, then you can't have what the creation offers you can only have what's structured in the system. You know, there's that law of the perpetual transmutation of radiant energy, which means one form of energy changes to another, to another, to another by these different transmuting devices. You know, the plant is a transmuting device that takes light from the sun and turns it into chlorophyll that when you take it into your body, cleanses your bloodstream because the, the blood molecule is identical to the chlorophyll molecule. The only difference between the two is one has um, iron in the center of it, the other one has magnesium in the center of it. So if you don't have that connection on the level where you're a creator, then you'll simply, through the law of perpetual transmutation of radiant energy, you'll simply keep creating along the lines of what your generations did, which was you know, symbolized by being lost in the desert for 40 years. So it just, you know, it all comes back full circle and it makes perfect sense. But then kings don't want things to make perfect sense when the king is on the receiving end of, you know, everything that everybody produces. The king wants to make sure that people believe they have to keep producing for him. Doesn't matter what he has to do to do it. Where so when we make the connection to who we are, mm-hmm. what we've always done. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, it we'll seems keep getting what we've always gotten. What does this, I was just going to say that. That's exactly what I'm thinking. We can transmuting the energy from our generational heritage. We're going to get what we always got, right? Right. And we were given this gift of creatorship, and, and creatorship is essentially the ability to transmute energy, change it from one form to another, chlorophyll. That's creatorship. That's transmuting energy. And we were given the ability to take this, like, this whole creation, and by harmonizing with it and understanding how its flow goes rather than how to restrict the things we, we don't want to feel and deal with, but how its flow goes, then you get to direct the next piece of transmutation that happens in your life. It's called creatorship. But if you're not conscious of that, if you haven't dealt with the generational patterns, then the generations are going to do the transmutation. You're going to go, oh, well, that's just life. That's the way it goes. Well, that was a saying, a quote that you mentioned, I think here. Um, Carl Young. Seemed to be on those lines. Richard. Yeah, he was brilliant. He had a lot of That's awesome true. pieces to the puzzle. Mm. Well, I think the one you might be thinking of, and it doesn't, the whole quote doesn't come to mind, but it ends with... And we will call it fate. And we will call it fate. That's, you know, the things, that's the one I was the things we re- Yeah. The things we refuse to deal with. Else to mm-hmm. We hide from ourselves. And then men going through lives and then, in quiet desperation. Well, now that, that's going to a, a different writer, but same, same basic okay, thing. Yeah. Okay. Go from the desperate city to the def- desperate country and satisfy themselves with the death of minks and muskrats. In other words, they feel mm-hmm. some power by killing things <laughs> instead of feeling the power of the presence of love in them, which is where their creatorship lies and bringing that fully into form. Then all the entertainments and distractions of the world that cause suffering to anything or anybody would disappear because there'd be no need for it anymore. There'd be, be no demand for it. And we're entering a, a stage in in our devolution where the attractiveness of drugs and alcohol, I mean, 
you look at the, the guy who was the Speaker of the House under the family um, family values party is now one of the biggest drug pushers in the country, pushing for the legalization of marijuana because he owns the core crops. <laughs> oh boy. And we're in a you know we're in a an area here that Jeannie talks about remembering when they moved to Bristol, Virginia, that uh, they had blue laws. Nothing was open on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And they just now, recently, you know, we've got a, a new big giant casino coming into town. And uh, and in the same building where the casino was being built, they were doing their legalized marijuana growing and producing. I said... Unfortunately, At the behest of the former the Speaker of the House of the United States Congress. Just perpetuating Family the values. bread and circuses. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Bread and circuses. It's unfortunate. Very unfortunate. <clears throat> but there's big money in it. Big money in it. And those who think that uh, money is the source of all happiness will accumulate billions, but you know they'll still end with divorces and offspring that commit suicide. So it obviously isn't the solution. Yeah. How wonderful that we can see a glimpse of the other side. Yes. This is really beautiful. Yes. What we're designed for. Offer hope. Offer hope. The natural, yep, yeah, the natural state of the human being is what we're designed for. Well, it's been been wonderful to review this and, and learn more, Michael. Thank you very much. This is, uh, How was it? Paul said it. You know, be not conformed to this world, but seek ye first. Yeah. place where you exist as love is the place where all creative action starts. If you've squandered that away, you know, I mean, over the years, I can't tell you how many people when you start talking about love and you're like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't even have that experience. I don't, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. It's like, oh. mm-hmm. So it's the restoration of being that it all starts with. So last question on the Addison. The I, th- I believe I heard you speaking that you can use this in the car. Well, I wouldn't suggest you use it while you're driving in your car. No. Correct. But we've now been on driving. we've been on uh, trips passenger, you where. Mm-hmm. Where you know I've used it, you know Gene's been driving. I've used it as a passenger with it plugged into the cigarette lighter. Or these air old brain cells are not cigarette lighters anymore. They're now just power supplies in the car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess I gave away my age when I said the cigarette lighter. <laughs> Young kids yeah. don't know what that is anymore in the car. <laughs> just like those blue laws, I remember those too. Wow, that was probably yep. close to ten anyway. And, yeah, nothing was open. You, even if you planned a trip, you had to really uh, figure out the gas uh, situation, fuel situation. Right. As many places weren't yep. open. It was a different day. Now you can pop in anywhere, buy all the drugs you want. Well, maybe not all of them, but they're they're growing the supply. The alcohol is to the point where it's killing about 3.3 million people around the globe every year. So that one's well integrated into the culture and, you know, been thought of as just something kind of fun and natural for humans to do. The thing that kills over 3.3 million people a year around the globe. It's bizarre how our minds have been turned around. Bizarre how it's been shifted backward. I think your words well, of course, I have a cabinet. 
the cabinet. Of course, I have I was a special just cabinet say. in my home <laughs> where where I keep I this keep celebration my food for my best friends and, and my family. I bring it out and we drink it and it goes slobbering down this the, the, the stairway with it. <laughs> yeah, that 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 fluid. That's that's a good one. I have a special cabinet just for those people I cherish most. Well, we think of what we do. My. But no, it's just how the mind's been skillfully turned backward and you know, turned around. Mm-hmm. And of course, that old game of denial. You know, what if we gave up every reason we had for being pissy or you know, what have you? What if we? What if we actually faced every power person dynamic inside of us, worked through those things, and just gave it up, just forgave it? And functioned as direct creators, bringing love energy into our forms and transmuting it into an expression that just literally pours love out into the universe. That's what the human was designed for. It's not about some kind of a religious trip. It's just real simple. It's what this Mm -hmm. instrument is designed for. What a different world. But the king had different plans. <laughs> he scooped up his wealth by conning those people into doing behaviors that no human mind would ever approve of, no truly human mind would ever approve of or participate in. But it's been skillfully turned around to where it looks heroic to do those things now. It's like, wow, what a, what a turnaround in mind energy. And, of course, that's just as important a part of cellular healing as anything else is. Well, that's been, been wonderful to, to uh, go over this, Michael, and learn, learn this. It's been wonderful. We'll continue the journey. It's been maybe, maybe sometime again before I get a chance to come on, but it's been wonderful, and I really thank you and Jeannie for the platform and all the information. Well, we hold you in our hearts, extend love in your direction to everybody down there in Texas with you. Uh, Texas could need a little support, I think, at these days. So we just extend it in your direction. <laughs> well, I certainly appreciate that and sending you that back, and thank you very much. All right. Lots of love and blessings. Take care. Same here, Michael. Thanks now. Bye. All right. So we're down to the last minute. Time flies when you're having fun. So much appreciation for everyone who lends their ears to these conversations and uh, hope they serve you well and create the best year yet of your eternal life. It's an awesome gift to give the world. Blessings. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with Dr. Michael Rice and myself, Jeannie Rice, and Dr. Tim Hayes and Michelle Pache as we present the first century Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. We are here for two hours every Monday through Friday from 12 noon to 2 o'clock Eastern Time on Mindshifters Radio. For more information on Aramaic forgiveness, please visit www.whyagain.org. That's www.whyagain.org. A-G-A-I-N dot org.